This is a wine saver. This is the cheapest woodworking clamp I own. Technically, this is cheaper, but usually you need more than one. This can do so much more than this because this only puts pressure in one small area. So on bigger pieces, you need a bunch of them and its reach is limited. This one clamp puts pressure over the whole piece no matter how big it is. You're only limited by the size bag you use. Vacuum bags can be expensive, but they don't have to be. I'm gonna show you how to make your own bags and the three levels of vacuum pressing from extremely cheap to stupid expensive. Vacuum presses have transformed my woodworking and it can open up so many creative possibilities for you. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. With vacuum presses, not only can it do flat clamping, but also curved pieces that would normally require special made jigs. In level one, we're going to veneer a tabletop for less than $25 in equipment. For level two, we're gonna spend some money on a cheap vacuum pump and do some curved work. And for level three, we're going to make 10 art skateboards and combine veneering with compound curves using the top of the line vacuum press made just for us woodworkers. I don't wanna give you the wrong impression thinking you need the big expensive vacuum press, you don't. The wine pump will work just fine. I just wanna show you how the three methods compare and how easy this stuff gets once you make the investment. So for level one, we're making a tabletop with walnut and oak veneers over some plywood. Having the ability to veneer your own pieces opens up so many creative doors and it's much easier and cheaper than using solid wood. My friend Joanne has a fabric store here in town and I got this eight gauge vinyl. It was listed for $5.99 a yard. I had a coupon for 50% off. I got two yards of this vinyl for $7 and I rounded up the charity. $7 for all of this vinyl. And then we'll double it up. And that should be big enough for this. I got my bag cut down to size to suck the air out of there. We're just going to use a simple wine saver pump and these nipples. The trick is how do I get it on there and keep that sealed? I've been playing around and I found these washers that fit over here. I can force it into this washer. That's a really, really tight fit, but I got that over that washer and we're gonna cut a hole in the vinyl and then seal that right on there. So it doesn't really matter where this goes. I'm gonna put it somewhere in the middle here. I'm gonna put a washer on the underside and I'm gonna seal it with some sealing tape. I'm gonna put some sealing tape on this as well. Where are you going? Where was that going? This might be a little tricky. I gotta get that through that bottom washer there using a the screwdriver to help get that to pop through. Oh, there it goes. The ceiling tape is a little messy. So I'm just gonna take some hot glue around there and just kind of seal the ceiling tape. It's not gonna be pretty and that's okay. Get in the underside too. That should be airtight. So now we're gonna use the ceiling tape all along the seams here. I only need to go about halfway. And we'll fold this in half. So before we seal that end of the bag, we're gonna glue our veneers to the tabletop here. I'm just using regular wood glue for this. There are specialty glues. We'll talk more about them later. So we'll stick our veneer on top there. And then to keep that flat, we're gonna throw on a piece of melamine here to make sure it's sucking air from all sides, you need a piece of webbing to throw on top. This could be from a bag of oranges or a sack of potatoes. And we'll just fold this over on top of itself. I ended up clamping the end to the bench just to make sure there were no air leaks. I think we're sealed all the way around. And then you just take your wine pump. You can see it sucking the air out of the bag there. It takes like a good five minutes to pump out all the air for a bag this size. Now with the hand pump, you have to come back every couple minutes because this is probably not perfectly sealed and you gotta suck the air out. And you just gotta keep doing that for an hour, an hour and a half. This is the easiest and cheapest way to get into vacuum pressing. This costs 10 bucks. The bag costs seven bucks and I've got enough material to make three or four more bags. 
the netting you can just get from a bag of potatoes, and then you need some sealing tape, which is a few more bucks. There are more expensive and even better ways. Check this out. Again, we're gonna make a quick bag. This should only take a minute or two. And again, with the sealing tape. So for level two, we're gonna use a vacuum pump. This particular vacuum pump costs $400. I think that's a little too expensive for level two. So we went to Harbor Freight and got this pump for $99. So without much of an investment, we can get into a little bit more advanced vacuum pressing. These are just some brass fittings that I got from the hardware store and I hot glued them to some washers. You can see I've used this quite a few times and we're just gonna put some sealing tape on there. This one goes on the inside of the bag, this one goes on the outside of the bag and then they screw into each other. Level two, but still fairly cost effective. Now that we have our bag, we're going to laminate some wood over a curved surface. I'm gonna use a dense piece of foam. This could be plywood, two by four, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to draw a curve on here and cut this out at the bandsaw. And I'm also cutting out my veneers that we're gonna use for the lamination. I went ahead and made my own veneers for this bent lamination glue up. You have a few options. You can buy veneer that's just already pre-made. This is two ply veneer where it's got the grain running this way on the one side and then the grain running the opposite way on the other side allows for a lot more flexibility in the bends. And then some of my favorite veneers is this paper backed veneer. It's very thin, but that paper on the backing allows for some crazy bends before it cracks. And then when it comes to glue, you've got a few choices. 95% of the time, you can just use regular old wood glue. Typon also makes this cold press for veneer glue. This glue doesn't come up through the pores on very thin veneers, ruining the top of your piece. And then I don't even know what this stuff is called because the logo is covered up now, but this stuff dries really hard and is great for crazy bends. Where these two glues, when they dry, there's still a little bit of flex in there. So for this, we're just gonna use some regular wood glue. This on top of there. Gonna lay down some wax paper on top of our mold just so it doesn't glue itself to that. Place our boards over that. Another piece of wax paper on top. Don't forget our orange bag netting. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape around the middle here so everything stays together. And then this can go right into our bag. We want to make sure that netting is underneath the little nozzle there. Now this right here, to close up the bag, you can use more tape here on the end. This is just some PEX pipe. I got a smaller one and a bigger one and they nest inside each other. And this is nice and reusable because this sealing tape can be a little messy sometimes. So I'm just gonna wrap this around and then snap this on. Take our $100 Harbor Freight vacuum Stick it right on there. Look at that. Look at that, no spring back, it kept its shape. If you do steam bending, you always have a little bit of spring back. And with this type, you might get a little spring back, but in this particular case, absolutely None, look at that. A $10 option, you have to come back every couple minutes and pump the air out. It's a very physical way of doing this. The $100 option, you can just leave this run for an hour or two and it's fine. And then the $1,000 option, this has auto cycling. This can run for days if you want it to. So when it reaches a certain pressure, it turns itself off. And then when that pressure gets a little bit lower, it turns itself back on and it's made to run for a very long time. Three different options, three different price points, they all do the same thing. For level three, we're gonna break out the big bag and the fancy vacuum press. You don't need this, but it makes life a lot easier. We're not only gonna make one skateboard, we're gonna make 10 skateboards. The crazy thing about skateboards is not only does it have a bend here and here, but it has a bend this way as well. So we've got some compound bends to deal with. There are lots of people who make skateboards with the wine pump thing. 
totally possible. You can buy kits with the wine pump thing to make your own skateboards. There is this phenomenal and amazing website called SkateCAD, and it's like Fusion 360, but for skateboards. You can change every parameter that you would ever want to change on a skateboard and then spits out a 3D file. And not only does it spit out a 3D file for the skateboard, but you can also spit out the files for the mold. Whether you just need a one piece mold for a vacuum or you need two pieces for a press. It's all browser based, so you don't need to download anything. There is a paid version, but you can get everything that you want with the free version. Absolutely phenomenal and definitely worth checking out. Even if you don't care about skateboards, you should just check it out just because it is a really, really cool website. I had a great conversation with the designer of SkateCAD about making the vacuum press mold for the skateboards. And a lot of skateboard makers will use the pink foam insulation stuff that you can get from Home Depot. He suggested, since I'm making 10 of them, to get this stuff. So the stuff that you get from Home Depot, you can, I can imprint it with my thumb. And for one skateboard, it's probably fine. But since I'm making 10, I want something a little bit more dense. So he suggested this website where I got this three pound, three inch thick foam. And it's a great resource that I will definitely be using in the future. I am going to cut the mold out on the CNC. You don't need a CNC. You could do it by hand, or you can even buy pre-made, I think this is the same foam as this, from a couple different websites. So you can just buy this, throw this in your vacuum, you're good to go. I've already cut the foam down to size. Three inch foam maxes out the height of my table saw blade, but it worked just fine. And then CNC'd everything out. It was a three hour cut, but now I have my mold and I'm ready to go. If you're following along and doing this at home, you want the male part of the mold, you don't need the female part. We are making a seven layer maple skateboard. You can buy the veneers already cut, which I did, I got 10 sets. The two outside pieces are beautiful pieces of maple. The five inside pieces are not as beautiful. And two of those pieces have the grain running the opposite direction for strength. I'm actually gonna have a very thin eighth layer of veneer for my 10 different designs. And I found this amazing piece of walnut that I'm gonna make veneers out of this as well. Ugh, it's heavy and beautiful. The big advantage of using the $1,000 vacuum is the auto cycling so it can run overnight as well as how fast it can remove the air. With the cheaper pumps, the glue might start to set before there's any clamping pressure. I also used a $150 vacuum bag for these boards. They are very thick and nearly impossible to puncture. They have a nozzle built right in and they quickly return to their shape after being used. It will last a lifetime. While we are finishing up these skateboards, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for over 10 years for my website, and I used to be a professional web developer. I used to make websites from scratch, sitting at a desk, in an office, making websites all day. Thank goodness I don't have to do that anymore, and I can focus on being creative and let Squarespace handle my website. It's 2024. Everybody needs a website, even if it's just a one pager with a photo and some contact information, you need a website. We're all makers and woodworkers and crafters and artists, and maybe we want to sell our stuff. Maybe we just want to promote ourselves, or maybe we just need a, a portfolio, a place to show off our work. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. There's this thing called the Fluid engine that makes everything so easy to update. It's just dragging and dropping and copying and pasting. and your website looks good on mobile, tablet, or the desktop because it reformats itself to look good on mobile, tablet, or the desktop. I will be selling all 10 of these skateboards 
on my Squarespace site. Not only can you sell physical items, but you can also sell digital items as well. Visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for allowing me to make these crazy videos and these crazy skateboards. All right, let's head to the skate park and see what the professional thinks. This is my buddy Braylon. He's a phenomenal skateboarder and I gave him permission to destroy this beautiful deck. I don't even know how this stuff is possible. I made this board just for him and the other 10 I made are for sale on my website. Patreon supporters get a $100 discount and first pick. Once they're gone, that's it. Everybody has a creative side and my goal is to pull it out of you. Please subscribe for more videos like this and check out this video here where I do some things with vacuum bags that I haven't seen anybody else do. Art makes the world a better place. Let's make more.